Hiroshima is the town of my memories. It is surrounded by green mountains and looks towards the sea. Through it flow seven beautiful rivers. My life was quite peaceful before the atomic bombing in my elementary school years. I was living happily. I enjoyed day-to-day -day life, doing things like learning to dance and playing with my friends. At the time, I believed my life would continue like this forever. Sometimes I liked to be alone. I would stay at home and draw many things. All day I would draw. It was what I loved the most. I was 13 years old at the time. I was supposed to go to the middle of Hiroshima city for mandatory labor service on the day of the bombing. But I'd had a stomach bug for a couple of days. So instead, I stayed home with my family. I was the smallest in our family. There was my father and mother, my brother, and two elder sisters. I was on the futon chatting with my second older sister next to me. I thought I heard the sound of a plane, but it seemed a long way off and very high up. While talking with my sister, I heard boom like plane noise come from high in the sky. As soon as I heard it, I got up nervously and said, here comes a Boeing B-29. At that same moment, I was surrounded by an incredible light and heat wave. In the moments soon after the bright light, we were hit with an earth-shattering roar. The house shook madly and I nearly fell over. Everything in the house broke apart and one after another, things started falling off on top of us. It got really, really dark as if day suddenly turned into night. I slowly passed out and remember thinking, I am dying, 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 over and over in my mind. When I regained consciousness, I heard people crying out. It was as if it was coming from all over the world at once. I wasn't sure, but I think I heard a cry. I didn't understand what happened. We could only see the dark grey sky through the broken roof from where we were huddled. We realized we were in a pile of rubble that was once our home and began to climb out from under it. We were covered with heavy debris and wooden beams from the house. I was worried they might fall on us. It was a miracle we weren't more seriously injured. We crawled out of the rubble somehow. I was in a state of disbelief when I saw the view around my house. I had first thought the bomb had dropped just over our house, but I was wrong. Every house in the area had collapsed. Surrounded by screams, it was as if I was in hell. I was in shock with the scenes around me. The whole area was destroyed. I was horrified. 
I felt nothing but fear at the time. The first thing I saw was people with something hanging from their shoulders down their arms. I didn't know what it was. It looked like hanging tattered clothes. Every single person was stumbling along with their arms out. Their skin and clothes were all burnt and melted together. They looked naked. Then I saw some military guys applying something to injured people's bodies. I knew there was a military post near the area. The stuff they were applying looked like vegetable oil, but I didn't notice that people were burnt until I recognized it was vegetable oil. The military people were applying the oil to injured people's bodies, such as their faces and backs. They were severely burned, and applying the oil seems to cause them terrible pain. There was a child screaming, trying to wake up her dead mother. I accidentally bumped my arm against something disgusting and slippery. It was a boy's arm. His arms were entirely skinless. I was wearing a shirt with short sleeves. After realizing what it was, I remember thinking how painful it must have been for him. I don't even remember saying sorry to him. We walked past the river. I didn't know how far we had walked from our house. We finally reached a cave at the bottom of a mountain. It was run by the military, and I thought maybe they could have had food somewhere in the cave. Exhausted and with tattered clothes, we rested just inside the entrance of the cave. The next day, when I woke up in the cave, I didn't want to believe the awful events of yesterday. The next day was a very hot day. It was 7th of August. Every school became a hospital for the badly injured. I heard people screaming and moaning in pain. And there was a horrible smell of burnt skin. On the 10th of August, we said goodbye to the family we stayed with. We were shocked to see the place our house used to be destroyed, and there was nothing left. And I suddenly realized that we had lost everything. It didn't look like we could live in our home again. But despite this, we decided to try and we actually stayed there for a period of time. After that, we started again from scratch. It was a hard situation. But we never thought of moving and starting a new life somewhere else. We tried everything to get our lives back. After a number of other difficult situations, I graduated from high school and entered the university in Kyoto. I studied Western art for four years. After that, I became an art teacher at high school. I think turning 50 years old is a pretty big turning point in life. My son and I traveled to Australia a couple of times together after one of my sisters had moved here and invited us. I also wanted to start my life over, so it made sense that we migrated to Australia together. It was a pretty big decision in my life, though. 
My experience is about absolute devastation. Although it upsets me, the reason I keep telling this story every year is that I want to guide youth in the right direction. The number of the people that can tell a first hand story about atomic bombing is decreasing year by year. Who can tell this story besides us? Otherwise, people might forget how awful the atomic bomb really was. I should tell them this story for Hiroshima. I feel it's my duty to keep telling this story for people as long as I can. <laughs>